How do I avoid being hit by lightning? Lightning flashes up to a hundred times a second worldwide. You'd think this would be enough for us to understand it properly, but it isn't. For starters, we can't predict when or where lightning will strike. We know that Ben Franklin was incredibly lucky with his alleged kite experiment, because lightning is a big streak of up to a billion volts and 200,000 amps of static electricity. It mainly appears during thunderstorms, which are named after the sound of a lightning strike. The big issue, though, is that we don't fully understand how lightning actually forms. One of the leading theories is that in a storm, tiny ice crystals and lumps of hail are crashing against each other. This violence causes electrons on some of the rising ice crystals to break off and attach themselves to the heavier falling hail. And because electrons are negative, the hail becomes negatively charged. We know that electricity is divided into positive and negative charge. It was actually Benjamin Franklin who introduced this idea in 1747. All the negative charge then starts to collect in the base of the storm cloud. The ground below contains both negative and positive charge, but the negative charges are repulsed by the negativity in the cloud base, leaving the positive charges all alone. And, just like in a bad romantic comedy, opposites always attract. Eventually, this attraction becomes overwhelming, and all the pent-up energy is released, with a bolt five times hotter than the sun. Lightning comes in several editions, including forked, streaked, rocket, and the very rare ball. Not all lightning strikes the ground. In fact, most of the time, it just fires about inside the storm cloud. If you see this happening, Count the seconds from when you see lightning to when you hear thunder, and then divide that number by five, and this will tell you how many miles away the storm is. But if you get caught out, steer clear of any metal. Water is also a good conductor of electricity, so avoid that as well. Try to get indoors if you can, but don't use the phone to let people know you're OK. What, what, we, what we can try and simulate now is if you get struck by lightning and it, it goes through your core... But so this is actually quite dangerous, this bit now. This yeah, is, this don't, would, this would don't do this at home. OK. Now, just to reassure everyone, this is not connected yet, even though I plugged it in, until these two buttons are pressed. OK. OK, so that, that's a gherkin. Yep. And if, so imagine that's you. You get hit by lightning and now it's going through the core of your being. So, first of all, you see it boiling quite quickly because there's huge amounts of current going through there. So it's boiling up, steam's coming out, and then it starts breaking down the very fabric of the gherkin, which could be you. <laughs> and then the temperatures, wow, the temperatures go. Boil, isn't it? Yeah. Come on. Oh there yes. There we go. There we go. And then it's so hot, you're getting actually light coming off it, and that light is a particular orange yellow, which you might recognise, yeah, Dara. That's, that's street light. That's, that's yeah. sodium light. And it's exactly the same way. I mean, that is sodium from the salt in the gherkin. Wow. <laughs> okay. It's, is it? Ooh, ow, wow. It's, uh, yeah, it's quite a few thousand degrees, probably, inside there. Is it OK to go in? Is that going to be all right? Yep. Yeah. OK, so that's the effect yeah. it'll actually have, have on yeah, flesh. Yeah. So but the path, is there a vivid way of seeing the, very, the, the actual okay. path? So, so the thing is, why does lightning happen? Because it's, it's, it's in a high charge trying to get through the air. The air is an insulator, so yeah. how does it get through? So it has to break down the air and make it into a conductor. And there's a really fantastic demo which I would like to show you, which sort of reproduces that situation. So this is... Let's say this is a piece of air. It's actually perspex, but they're both insulators. And we've irradiated it with, with electrons. So there's lots of electrons in here. You can't see them, but there's yes. high voltage in there. Now, they've got nowhere to go because it's an insulator. They can't get out. And it's the same with lightning. So there's a huge amount of charge. It's looking for somewhere to go. So the electrons are sitting quite happily at the moment in rest. So how do we shake them out of that? Yeah. So we, we need to give them a high potential, a place, a, basically a concentration point. And I'm going to hit it with a hammer. OK, let's bring the lights down so we can see this is as dramatic as possible. Oh, that's quite moody, actually. <laughs> you tell me when. We're ready to go. OK. Oh! Now, although that looks like just a crack, it's not. If you look at it very... See, see the little light? There's more There's lightning still, still happening, lightning yeah. still lightning occurring as it goes along. Because it's still giving parts of the electrons. My God, how long does that go on for? It can go on for hours, because bits of the electrons that are marooned in this insulator are finding this path which it created by breaking down this 
this insulator, so I'm melting it basically, vaporizing it. So the little holes are all what you see here, feathery holes. And um, these patterns, are, you know, you saw that on the people, you know, who were burnt, you saw that on their skin, because that's exactly the same process. Here's the same effect in slow motion. So just hitting it with the hammer creates that effect. Let's see it. And that was the flash. That, see, that is the flash of, of huge temperature. That's, that's tens of thousands of degrees centigrade because it vaporizes the insulator. And then that creates that fern-like pattern. And all the electrons are channeled down to Earth, which is why this hammer was connected to it. That is incredible. And, and it's still keep... going, yeah. yes. Did you know that during peak storm season, Venezuela's Lake Maracaibo experiences up to 280 lightning strikes an hour? That is one every 13 seconds. Can you imagine what an awesome sight that would be? But wait a minute, wait, 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 before you pack your bags and you rush off onto the next flight to Caracas, spare a thought for your personal safety. Lightning might be an impressive light show up in the clouds, but if you and your selfie stick are in the wrong place at the wrong time, the Catatumbo lightning could pose a pretty serious health hazard, as could any lightning, to be fair. As air, rain and ice is thrown around in cumulonimbus clouds towering up to seven kilometres high, static electricity builds up. Now, you may choose yoga or a game of squash or cuddling your cat to release tension. But when the potential builds up in a storm, their way of letting it all go is to discharge several million volts of electricity. Now, to put that into context, the electricity supplied by mains outlets at home in the UK is just 240 volts. And those high voltage power lines with their danger of death signs, only about half a million volts. The lightning is essentially a massive spark. The electric current extends down from the cloud, superheating the air that it passes through until it's five times hotter than the surface of the sun, turning it into plasma which glows blindingly bright. It will seek out tall objects or materials that it can easily flow through, so water-filled trees or water-filled people are ideal targets. The problem is, since the strike will only take about a tenth of a second and will be travelling about a third the speed of light, there's no way of predicting when or where it might touch down. So, with 100 lightning bolts streaking down towards the Earth every single second, just what is the risk? You might have heard that you have a one in a million chance of being struck by lightning. Sounds pretty good odds, but that's only the probability of being struck in a given year. Across your whole lifetime, you're looking at something a bit more like a one in 13,500 chance. And since no man is an island, the likelihood of someone you know being affected by a lightning strike is more than one in a thousand, which suddenly makes it all seem a lot more real. Around 4,000 people are reported to have been killed by lightning every year, although that number doesn't include the undeclared deaths in rural areas of developing countries. But even with such scary odds, it might surprise you to learn that 9 out of every 10 lightning strike victims live to tell the tale. And, in the US at least, annual lightning fatalities have dropped over the last few decades, from more than 450 in the early 90s to less than 50 today. One of the main reasons that so many survive when they're caught short by the sky's short surface it is the shocking speed of the encounter. Yes, your body may become the unwitting host of several million volts, but only for the merest fraction of a second. And that helps to limit, but not entirely prevent, sadly, injury. Direct strikes have the potential to be the most damaging, since lightning tends to enter near the head and then travels all the way through the body to exit and discharge at the feet. Most of the electrical current will pass across the surface of the body in what's known as a flashover, instantly vaporising any moisture it encounters, which can have the somewhat disturbing effect of exploding the victim's clothes off. It can sometimes leave behind a lightning tree on the skin, an intricate pattern of burst blood vessels showing the path that the current took. The heat of the current can also melt materials like polyester and hang around in metal jewellery, causing fairly major burns. Flashovers help to discharge most of the lightning's energy, but some electricity will opt not to travel over the body, but through it. And that is where it can cause more serious and lasting damage. 
And that is because of our internal machinery. It relies on electricity. Our brain, spinal cord, our entire nervous system is basically an intricate network of wiring along which nerve impulses, tiny electrical potentials, pass at great speeds to control the action of every muscle and gland as well as coordinate our conscious and subconscious thoughts. Adding a few million extra volts to this network can not only send the recipient's muscles into sudden and uncontrollable spasms, but it can burn out neurons and shut down parts of the nervous system altogether. It can also stop the heart from beating, although our hearts do have their own internal pacemaker and can usually reset themselves. More worryingly, it can shut down the breathing centre of the brain, meaning you literally have no way of getting your lungs to inflate. Without oxygen getting into the blood, the heart can be sent into a more fatal arrest. It's seriously scary stuff, but there is a relatively simple solution. CPR. Many lightning strike survivors owe their lives to the dedicated actions of friends or strangers who have performed mouth to mouth to keep their blood full of oxygen until medical help can arrive. And there's little risk to first responders. Despite lightning's immense power, once it's gone, it's gone. There's no lingering electrical charge. So the next time you find a hiker lying naked and smouldering in a field after a storm, don't start searching for UFOs or snapping a photo. Donating a few of your breaths could mean the difference between life and death. Sadly though, it's not all good news. About three quarters of all lightning survivors are thought to suffer lasting physical or mental disability. Our squishy brains are just all too scrambled by vast current and people can be left paralyzed or with personality changes and PTSD. While you are more likely to survive a lightning strike, it certainly isn't something to put yourself in the path of. And contrary to what you might have heard, rubber shoes won't necessarily keep you safe and lightning most certainly can strike the same place twice. Unfortunately, the only surefire way of surviving a lightning storm is to be nowhere near the storm at all. I want to know though, have you ever had a close call with Thor? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to Earth Lab for more shocking science videos. Sorry I couldn't resist. I've been so strong recently. Anyway, have an explore of the channel and I'll see you next time.